Greetings everybody, I'm Jody Bliley, Senior Content and Community Lead at Adobe, and in this lesson we'll see how easy it is to do live HTTP multi-bitrate streaming to both Flash and iOS. So multi-bitrate streaming is also called dynamic streaming and adaptive streaming. They're all the same thing. It's when you take a single video source and you encode it into multiple streams and each stream has a different bitrate. And the video player then switches automatically between those bit rates based on what resources are available on the client so that the, the viewer has a good playback experience. So you might remember that when we streamed a single stream from a media player, we requested a .f4m file from Flash or a .m3u8 file from an iOS device. Now with multi-bitrate streaming, you've got multiple streams available. So you need to request what's called a set level F4M or M3U8 file. That set level file contains pointers to each of the individual streams within a set. So Flash Media Server ships with a tool that lets you build a set level file. It's in the Tools F4M Configurator folder. We'll open it up here. And we'll add pointers to each live stream. So first we'll make our F4M file. We're going to use a base URI so that we can save some typing. We enter the IP address of the server. In our case, it's a local IP address. And then HDS-Live. That tells the server to use the Live Packager for Flash content. Then we specify the Live Packager application. And this is the tricky part. We need to specify an instance of that Live Packager application. You can use multiple instances of that same application for different streaming events, for example. It just depends how you want to configure it. So if you use the default instance, you, you specify it by saying underscore def inst underscore. Just something you have to memorize. And then we have to specify a live event. A live event is a configuration level within the Live Packager application, which also lets you um, stream multiple live events using this one application and configure them each differently. So we'll use the default live event on the server, which is already configured. It's called live event. And now we need to enter our stream names. So we'll just use live stream one, and we're going to request this file from Flash. So we need to use F4M. Well, this will be the lowest bitrate stream. Live stream two, we'll give that 500. And live stream three, 1,000. So that's what this manifest file looks like. So this set level file is the file that the media player is going to request. Then the media player looks through it and requests each of these individual streams as needed. Save that file as live event.f4m to the web root folder. This file could have any name, and it can be saved on any HTTP server. It doesn't need to be saved on the same HTTP server that's built into Flash Media Server. So that simplifies content management. It gives you more options. So now, let's see, we'll go to the M3U8 tab. We can't use a base URL with M3U8, so we'll type this again. So this is our file that we're going to request from our iOS device server IP address, and this time we're going to say hls-live because iOS devices use HTTP live streaming. That's the Apple technology um, that serves content over HTTP. Again, the live packager. Again, the def inst. Again, the live event. The live stream names are the same, but we just end these stream names with M3U8. The bit rates of the file are the same. These are the same streams. They just are requested slightly differently from the Apple device. Live stream three, and we used a thousand. So the M3U8 variant playlist file looks like this. Same thing, pointers to the stream level M3U8 files. Now the server generates those stream level files, whether they're M3U8 or F4M, it generates them on the fly when they're requested. So you can't see those on the server and you don't need to create them. You just need to create these set level files. Live event.m3u8 
save that also to the web root folder. And now we need to go over to Flash Media Live Encoder and send those streams to Flash Media Server. So now we'll configure Flash Media Live Encoder to encode this stream into three streams of three different bit rates and send them over to Flash Media Server for packaging. So we're going to choose the H.264 video codec because it's supported by both HDS for Flash and HLS for iOS. The main profile is supported by both, as is level 3.1. Um, the main profile is supported for the iPad that we're using. Some older iOS devices require the base profile. Keyframe frequency, we want to use four seconds because the live event on the server, the default live event that we're using, chunks the media into four second fragments and we want to match that with our keyframe frequency. You can also use a multiple of four seconds but we'll just use four. We've got our bit rates which are the same as in the set level files 150, 500, and 1000. And then we send it over to the server using RTMP. The server then sends it to the clients using HTTP. Here's our IP address and the live packager application on the server. Our live stream name that we also specified in the set level file. And then if you use this percent sign I, Flash Media Live Encoder automatically creates stream names, stream na live stream one, live stream two, live stream three. We use our query string to send the live packager application this variable, adbe-live-event, which allows us to assign an event name to this streaming event. And again, we're using the live event, the default event, and we should be good to stream. So we want to make sure that we're getting our three NetStream Publish events, NetStream Publish Start, NetStream Publish Start, NetStream Publish Start, for Livestream 1, Livestream 2, and Livestream 3. So now we'll go over to the server, open the sample application, samples, video player, video player. So this video player again uses Strobe Media Playback 1.6, which is built on the open source media framework. And now what we do is request that set level file. So this is Flash, so we're requesting live event.f4m over HTTP. We saved it in the web root, so we can just call it directly. And we should see the live stream. We saved it in the web root, so we can just call it directly. So there we go. Let's see if we can see the stream on the iPad. So here we are on the iPad. We'll open Safari and enter the URL to the live event.m3u8 file. In this lesson, we've seen how easy it is to capture a live stream encoded into multiple bit rates, stream it to Flash Media Server. The media server then packages it automatically for delivery over HTTP to Flash players and iOS devices.